A very good afternoon to all of you. Thanks for joining us. Today we will be talking about early splash screen using U-Boot. I am Devash Thakkar and this is my colleague Nikhil. We both work as software engineers at Texas Instruments. At Texas Instruments, we strongly believe in supporting open source ecosystems and have upstream first mentality. We strongly believe these are necessary ingredients to create a long-term sustainable and quality products. So we, th we would like to thank you Linux Foundation and open source community to help us achieve this. This is the outline of the presentation. So we'll start with introduction like what is bootloader, what is U-Boot, what is splash screen and what is early splash screen. We'll see then where does the splash, splash screen sits in the boot flow. We'll go through then understanding the basics of the splash screen framework and then see what has changed with the early splash screen. We'll then go through a step-by-step -step guide on how you can add splash screen support for your own display controller and your own display panel at the U-Boot proper and then see what are the steps you need to follow to have this support as early splash screen in the U-Boot SPL2. Lastly, we'll see how you can have persistent splash screen and flicker free transition to operating system so that your splash screen stays until the OS is booted up. So what is bootloader and why is it needed? Bootloader is a software which basically loads your operating system. Why is it needed? It is needed because operating system has certain prerequisites like it needs your DDR initialized, it needs certain peripherals to be already up and running before it can be started. So bootloader plays that role where it prepares the necessary environment by initializing DDR and any other uh, required peripherals so that operating system can be loaded. What is U-Boot? U-Boot is an open source bootloader which, which helps in booting the operating system in embedded systems. It supports vast variety of 32-bit and 64-bit SOC architectures like ARM, MIPS, RISC-V, etc. And it has a community support of across multiple board vendors and different boards. What is splash screen? Splash screen is an introductory screen that comes up when your device is booted up. So for, for example, you have a phone and you power on that phone. So before your phone gets powered on fully, uh, there is a logo that comes up on the display before your device is fully booted. So that logo is nothing but a splash screen. Why splash screen is useful? So splash screen basically serves two purposes. For the manufacturers, it provides a way to show their branding logo as early as possible when your device is powered on. And for the consumer, it acts as a feedback so that your device is started, is uh, booting up. The other advantage is it also facilitate, facilitates enabling an on-display console so that you can debug and uh, see your uh, prompt uh, on the display panel instead of using any other peripheral like UART or anything else. So we'll, we'll go to the boot flow which U-Boot uses and we'll see where does the splash screen sits in this boot flow. So as soon as you power on your board, uh, power on reset happens and a software called ROM bootloader gets started which is nothing but a hard-coded software loaded on your EPRO and it is uh, it starts running when your uh, device gets powered on. Its role is uh, to initialize the boot media which is required to load the next stage of bootload, uh, next, uh, next state of bootloader in the chain. It is very limited in size and it uses static RAM for any operations. So uh, then SPL comes into picture which is loaded by ROM. It is nothing but secondary program loader its main role is to initialize TDR and any other necessary peripherals of boot media that are needed to support the loading of the next bootloader in chain, that is the U-Boot proper. U-Boot proper is the full-fledged bootloader which runs from uh, DDR and its main advantage is like it is easily upgradable. So for example, if you are rolling out a firmware update or you want to replace your U-Boot with a new version with some uh, bug fixes, then you, you can easily replace this U-Boot proper instead of replacing SPL. 
It also provides command line support through that we, you can load uh, different images or display the splash screen and some debug functionalities, etc. The U-Boot proper loads operating system, which uh, your Linux kernel starts ex executing and it initializes the DDR and uh, different peripherals as per the device tree. Its main role is to act as a memory manager and a program scheduler and it acts as an interface between application and the hardware. So until now, the splash screen support was present only at the U-Boot proper stage, which is third in the pipeline. With early splash screen, we added support for splash screen in the SPL stage so that the splash screen is up faster by two seconds now. The other advantage which early splash screen offers is it supports something called Falcon boot mode. So Falcon boot mode in U-Boot is a boot mode where uh, U-Boot proper stage is skipped and SPL directly loads your kernel. So with splash screen available at SPL, the splash stays persistent when your operating system is loaded even when U-Boot proper is not in the chain. Now we'll go through the uh, details regarding understanding the splash screen framework and see in contrast what changed with the early splash screen. So for splash screen, you had to enumerate display controller and display panel related configuration parameters like video timing, frame buffer related information, etc. in the device tree files. For early splash screen, you don't need to add any new node. You just need to add a property called boot ph pre ram, which basically tells the U boot that these nodes are applicable at the SPL stage too. And we also had different compile time options, which were supported as k configs to enable splash screen. Like you had command BMP to support bitmap commands, video to enable video U class, video TIDS is the platform specific display driver we have then splash screen and splash source to enable the various storage media used for splash and enable the splash screen, BMP JZIP to enable displaying compressed images in case you want to, you are interested in having a very low, uh, low bitmap file size and to get the display as fast as possible. You have uh, different bitmap uh, formats we support, the, there are key configs for them. So for early splash screen, uh, there is nothing much changed. There are parallel k configs defined for early splash screen too, but only difference is they are prefixed with the prefix SPL. The third thing that we used to do uh, is like we had a board environment file which defined different U-boot environment variables for splash, like splash file, which tells which file you want to display as splash screen, splash image, which tells the address where your splash file needs to be loaded in DDR, splash position, which is nothing but your coordinates of your splash file, and splash source, which is the storage media that is used for splash. In this case, it is the uh, OSPI flash. So for early splash screen 2, we are using the same board.env file. Only difference is that in uboot proper, these were proper environment variables. So you can basically change them runtime while uh, at the you boot proper command line and uh, you can uh, set it to a different file or a different address and on the runtime. But with early splash screen, these uh, environment variables are static and they go inside the binary. So in case you want to change or update these variables in the splash SPL, then you need to recompile your SPL again after updating this variables in the board file. We'll try to understand uh, what is driver model in U-Boot first. So in U-Boot, there is a concept called driver model, which basically provides an abstraction uh, to user and it provides a platform independent API to consumer to talk to uh, different hardwares like U-Class video is for talking with your display controller driver. And the other advantage uh, the driver model happens is, uh, provides is that like it provides instanti instantiation based on device tree platform data. So your device gets enumerated and instantiated only if it is enabled in device tree. So for example, if you have multiple 
display panels or multiple display controllers, you don't need to recompile the current uh, U-boot again. You can just enable those particular panel and display controller in your device tree and then and then only your U device for that particular uh, display controller will get created. So we have a U class video uh, which is a generic, uh, which provides generic APIs to consumer to talk to your video hardware. Then uh, it has some callbacks which need to be impl implemented in your instantiation of this driver that is a U class underscore video uh, driver that is platform specific. So it needs to implement the callbacks that are required for video U class. And this is the layer which talks with your display hardware. Now before going through the code flow, we'll try to understand how the memory reservation and frame buffer allocation happens in U-Boot. So in U-Boot, when the U-Boot is loaded from SPL, a board init sequence is called, which reserves memory areas for different components. Like for example, it reserves here the memory region for video frame buffer, page table, trace buffer, and other stuff. So this reservation is needed because if U-Boot relocates, we want to make sure that relocation happens only below this reserved areas. Like re relocation should not touch any of the regions which are marked as reserved. So uh, the flow is like it starts reserving from the top of the ramp or the end of the ramp and it grows downwards. So this board in its sequence calls a function called reserve video, which reserves the memory required to uh, display your frame buffer based on your based on the format you selected and the size of your frame buffer. This reserve video function in turn calls video video reserve function from the video U class driver. So now we will try to understand the code flow that was followed in splash screen and what changed with the early splash screen. So for splash screen, as we mentioned in earlier slide. There is a routine called board in it up, which is triggered when U boot is loaded. And this calls, this triggers the calls to video reserve function directly based on the K configs that are selected. This video reserve uh, call triggers a call to U class, which basically binds your display driver. When I say display driver is bound, it means your frame buffer information, which the display driver was configured based on your device tree. It is exported to the video U class. So the corresponding memory required to display that frame buffer is reserved by the video reserve function. Now, after this, uh, U boot needs to relocate. And after relocation, it calls an API called splash display. If you have enabled the splash screen key config, this splash display call triggers uh, the something called video post probe, which in turn triggers the probe of your display controller driver. Now this is the main function because in this probe function only your display is initialized, display pipeline is also set and your logo also gets started getting displayed in this function. So now we'll see what changed with the early splash screen. So the only difference with respect to early splash screen is that the framework doesn't call this video reserve and splash display functions directly based on kconfigs. So we had to call uh, uh, this functions manually in our board specific file. For example, in board init R, we are calling something called SPL board init, which in turn calls the video reserve inside which we are calling the video reserve function. And this is the rest of flow is same, like the display driver gets bound and the frame buffer information is reserved based on the uh, display driver and the device tree set. Now, after this, we call again the splash display function manually. The splash display function triggers the probe of our display driver. And this is where again the display pipeline is set and your logo starts getting displayed. Now my colleague will walk through further steps on how you can add splash screen for your own device. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now I'll walk you through the steps on how to add splash screen for a new device at U-Boot proper stage first. Then we'll go through the steps to add early splash screen for your device. 
So very first step comes here is to add your display controller driver as a U-class video. U-class video here refers to the class of video drivers. It provides the necessary functionalities which are required by your display controller. Uh, this section is very important for every driver. This is in reference to our display controller. So similarly, we will add it for your display controller. The first is the IDs. These are the compatible string which you attach with your device tree nodes so that the U-boot knows which uh, device tree node is accessing which driver code. Next is the U-boot driver macro. It declares your driver and it has the ID. It defines the class which your driver belongs to. Then there are three important methods which Devas has already told but I will explain it again. Bind, probe and remove. Bind enumerates the list of the uh, drivers and adds the di drivers in the list. Probe will initialize your driver and remove method is required when you are transitioning from U-boot to OS so that the driver is in a clean state when it is handed over to Linux and there is no kernel crash. You will have to add a device tree node after adding your driver code so that you initialize your register regions and the necessary parameters. Next step is to add the panel driver. Uh, you can always add your own panel driver as U-class panel. Uh, if you are using an OLDI panel, you can always use simple panel.c. This is the driver code which is available already in U-boot. It has certain operations like enable backlight, set backlight and get display uh, panel timings which are sufficient for enabling an OLDI panel. You can use the following compatible string with the device tree nodes or you can add a new one. It also has operations like probe of open firmware to platform. These are the functions you will need to implement if you are adding your own driver code for panels. Moving ahead, these are the examples for the display controller node. You can see that I have added the register regions here, the ports in similar fashion. When you are adding your device tree nodes, you will need to add the register regions, ports, and other related information. Here in case of panel, we have added the panel timing parameters as you had seen the get display timing function there which reads these device tree nodes and sets up your panel. Next step is to add the build support for your video driver. So first is you add, you define the configs for your driver. Uh, for your display controller, we define a config called video TIDSS. For panels, there are configs already available, config simple panel which you can use directly or you will need to add those configs again. So using those configs, we make, uh, we add a make file defining the rules to compile those. So here you can see object and the config ahead which ensures that the driver is being compiled. So using these configs, when you enable them in your board def config file, the uh, U-boot will read those configs and compile the necessary driver files and it gets initialized at U-boot. If, if these are not defined, then you will not have the driver initialized at U-boot. Next step is to enable the splash screen. Devarsh has already mentioned you about the configs splash screen which are necessary. You define those in your board def config file. Next, next is the splash locations. This is very important because in this you provide the metadata, metadata about your splash locations. Here we have added the metadata for OSPI and SD card. Uh, we define the what kind of storage it is, storage SF, storage MMC and then we add certain flags defining what kind of memory it is, like it is a raw memory or it is a file system. Depending on your splash storage, you will add other parameters like for, open, uh, for OSPI we are adding the offset and for MMC we are adding the device and the partition. Finally, you will add the necessary environment variables which already Devash has explained uh, and those are very important because the splash display API will uh, read those environment variables and enable your splash screen. Uh, now I'll help you uh, uh, test splash screen at U-boot. Here are some tips and tricks which you can use. Uh, you can always run the command dm tree and board info. dm tree will give you log of all the drivers available at U-boot and if they are enabled. And board info will give you if the frame buffer region is allocated and if the driver is active at the stage. You can also test if the drivers are active at U-boot. You can always use the use the following commands to test if the splash screen is if the display is coming up fine. Uh, so you load use fat load MMC to load your uh, image from your SD card. Then you load uh, it to a certain region in the memory. Then you run the command BMP display, which takes the image from that memory region and displays it. Here are the outputs for the DM tree and board info. Here you can see that the video doesn't have a plus in front of it, which means it's inactive and also the panel doesn't have a plus in front of it. Both are inactive. 
Here in this case, it is inactive because we are enabling them at SPL, SPL stage, so we don't require splash screen at U-boot proper stage. Now let's walk through the steps to enable splash screen at SPL stage, which enables the early splash screen. At SPL stage, uh, as Devars has mentioned, there is no default call to reserve video memory. So we, in the board specific file, we have added this function video setup, which will reserve memory for you and you can go ahead with uh, displaying the frame buffer. And this is this section is very important because after uh, now that you have the splash call at your uh, board specific file, you need to reserve a region to load your BMP image. And you can't load it just anywhere in the memory map because SPL further will load the U-boot. And if this region overlaps with the U-boot region, the SPL might crash. So you have to be very careful, understand the memory map and define a region such that you use that region safely without uh, crashing your U-boot. And here we are reserving the region 0x802 followed by fire zeros and that's the safe location which we found. Next stage is to call the splash API. Uh, there is no default splash display API called from your uh, SPL stage. In the board specific file, we have called the video setup and then the splash display which are necessary to enable the splash screen at SPL stage. And with this, you are good to go. And after you enable the splash related and BMP configs at SPL stage, you will get the splash screen at U-boot. Now let's talk about persistent splash screen and flicker-free transition. Uh, initially, when we employed the deploy, when we enabled the splash screen feature, what was happening was SPL was removing the video driver, U-boot was reinitializing it, due to which the you the image used to vanish and then come back again. So to prevent this from happening, what we did was we used something called blobs. U-boot provides this functionality called blobs in which you can store information from uh, store and pass information from one stage of U-boot to another stage. Here we are passing from SPL stage to U-boot proper stage. What we do is when we reserve memory in SPL stage, we store the information uh, like the frame buffer starting address, the size and then pass it to U-boot. When U-boot proper tries to reserve video memory, it checks if the blob is available, it, do it doesn't initialize the memory region and you have the frame buffer reserved in U-boot displaying the, continu uh, continuing to display the same image. Uh, here you can see that when video reserve is called, uh, we are checking if it's the first stage of U-boot and preparing the blobs. And when reserve video is called, it checks if the blob list finds the U-boot blob, a video blob, and then we use it to reserve reserve the memory. Now we have achieved flicker free transition between the stages of U-boot, but we also have to keep continuing to display the same image when Linux comes up or before the Linux initializes the DSS controller again. Uh, we did it in a very simple way. What we did was we reserved a frame buffer region uh, defining the start address and the size of the frame buffer region. So Linux took it as a reserved region and didn't reuse it when it uh, had to initialize something or didn't, didn't use it for some other purposes and ensuring that the display controller displayed the same image till the Linux uh, took over. But there is an advanced and dynamic way to do it in which uh, U-boot can dynamically update the device tree which is passed to the Linux. In the device tree, you'll attach the frame buffer node so that Linux, node, uh, Linux knows which frame buffer region to be used and you don't have to uh, uh, reserve the region because that uh, if in future, if you don't want U-boot splash screen and you disable it, still the region won't be accessible uh, if you reserve the region in the first, in the simple way. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Texas Instruments and Linux Foundation for giving me this opportunity. Uh, here are the some, here are few references which you can use to write your U-boot driver code or understand how the splash screen is to be enabled at different stages of U-boot. And you can check out the TI U-boot tree to enable splash screen. Before we move on to the Q&A session, I would uh, like to dis uh, sh show a demo video. So now Devash has powered on the board in this video. You can see the locks coming up and the splash screen coming up very quickly because the early splash screen was enabled and you see the Linux started to boot up but the image continues to stay on. And it will stick till the Linux kernel comes up. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh,